Hello friends, in the last video we solved a 1D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using forward time centered space or FTCS finite difference method. In this video we are going to solve a 1D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using backward time centered space or BTCS finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D transient heat conduction problem. We discretize the domain into five grid spacings. We consider a single time step and solve the problem using backward time center space finite difference method. We will then vary the grid spacings and time steps and resolve the problem and obtain solutions. We have a 1 meter long copper bar. The bar is initially kept at 0 degree Celsius. At time t equals 0, both the ends of the bar are maintained at 100 degree Celsius. The material property thermal diffusivity alpha equals 1 e to the negative power 4 meter square per second. Let's get back to the general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates, which is given below. That is dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha times dou t over dou t. Here the uppercase t represents the temperature, which is a function of x, y, z and time t. Alpha is the thermal diffusivity in, given in meter square per second. Alpha equals K over rho C, where K is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter Kelvin. Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram Kelvin. G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation in watts per meter cube. Our assumptions on the material thermal conductivity is given below. The thermal conductivity along the x direction, for example, does not vary. Accordingly, it is considered homogeneous along the x direction. Likewise, k, y, k, z, they are constant along the y and z directions. Also, we have k, x equals k, y equals k, z equals k which is the isotropic condition. For 1T transient heat conduction with no heat generation, equation 1 reduces to a simpler form. We assume temperature does not vary significantly along y and z directions when compared with x direction. Also, the heat generation term g equals 0. Accordingly, we get dou square t by dou x square equals 1 over alpha times dou t by dou t where t is a function of x and time which is lowercase t. Equation 2 is rearranged as below. dou t over dou t equals alpha times dou square t by dou x square. To solve this partial differential equation we need one initial condition and two boundary conditions. The initial condition is t at x comma t equals 0 equals t in. The boundary conditions are t at x equals 0 for all times t equals t n1, t at x equals l for all times t equals t n2, and lowercase t is greater than or equal to 0. To obtain t, we need to solve the above PDE. We'll Utilize finite difference method to solve the above PDE. To do so, we need to replace the partial derivatives with finite difference approximations. We replace the time derivative with first order backward difference and the space derivative with centered difference approximations. We get Ti n plus 1 minus Ti n by delta t equals alpha times ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times ti n plus 1 plus ti plus 1 n plus 1 
over delta x square. Rearranging, we get tin plus 1 minus tin equals alpha times delta t by delta x square times ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times ti n plus 1 plus ti plus 1 n plus 1. Let d equals alpha times delta t by delta x square. Where d is the diffusion number, we then get ti n plus 1 minus ti n equals d times ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times ti n plus 1 plus ti plus 1 n plus 1. Rearranging minus d times ti minus 1 n plus 1 plus 1 plus 2d times ti n plus 1 minus d times ti plus 1 n plus 1 equals ti n. Equation 4 is the finite difference approximation of the original partial differential equation or PDE which we were trying to solve. Here i represents the node location on the discretized domain and n represents the time step. The finite difference tensile is given below. We have temperatures known at t i comma n and we need to solve for temperatures at i minus 1 comma n plus 1 comma i comma n plus 1 comma and i plus 1 comma n plus 1. <coughs> the above approximation is called backward time centered space or BTCS method. This is an implicit method, hence temperatures Ti's at present times n plus 1 need to be obtained based on Ti's at previous times as shown in equation 4. The equations need to be solved simultaneously as we have unknown temperatures at neighboring points for the same time step. The advantage being implicit methods are unconditionally stable, but D the diffusion number still needs to be smaller for accuracy con considerations and not stability considerations in general. The truncation error is order of delta t plus order of delta x square. Now let us discretize the 1t domain into say 5 segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below. Node temperatures at node 1 and node 6 are known. These are the boundary conditions. To apply equation 4, we need to consider the interior nodes 2 to 5. Let i equals 2 and n equals 0. Equation 4 becomes minus d times t1 1, 1 plus 1 plus 2d times t2 1 minus d times t3 1 equals t2 0. Similarly, for i equals 3 4 5 and n equals 0, we get minus d times t21 plus 1 plus 2d times t31 minus d times t41 equals t30 and so on. Here tin comma t6n are the boundary conditions for all times and ti0 is the initial condition for all interior nodes. Let delta t equals 100 seconds, delta x equals l over the segment length say m then this equals 1 over 5 equals 0 0.2 meters. Then d equals alpha times delta t by delta x squared, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 times 100 by 0 0.2 squared equals 0 0.25, which is lesser than or equal to 0 0.5. Note, in this method, this, since it, this is an implicit method, we don't need to meet the stability criteria. We still target d within 0 0.5 for accuracy considerations and not for stability considerations. Substituting the values of d and the initial conditions and boundary conditions into the above equations, we get the following set of equations, which can be arranged in a, in a matrix form as shown below. Now we substitute the values of D, ICs and BCs, we get the following matrix. The above equation can be solved using Thomas algorithm TA as the matrix we are dealing with is a tridiagonal matrix. Iterative methods such as Gauss-Seidel 
successive over relaxation SOR methods can also be used. Solving the above equation using Thomas algorithm on MATLAB produces the following results at time t equals 100 seconds. T2 equals 17.2414 degrees Celsius. T3 equals 3.4483 degrees Celsius. T4 is the same as T3 and T5 is the same as T2. Likewise, we can find the temperatures at these interior nodes at the next time step by choosing n equals 1 and so on. Graphical results are presented using MATLAB for this case. Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop codes for a general case where the number of grid spacings and time steps can be altered as desired and solutions are primed accordingly. Now let's go back to our MATLAB program. We have the total time t equals 100 seconds and the number of steps, time steps is 1. And we have the length of the bar given as 1 meter and the number of spatial grids along the x direction is 5. Let's run this case. And we get these values as we display it in the PowerPoint for the temperatures at different points along the x direction. Now let's look at the graphical results. On the left hand side, the top portion, we have the initial conditions. The end points are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. The initial temperatures at the interior points are kept at 0 degrees Celsius. And the on, and along the, in the left left hand side, the bottom portion, we have the temperature profile at the final condition at time is equal to 100 seconds. Here the boundary conditions are still met. The end points are still at 100 degrees Celsius and the interior points, the temperature are a little bit different from what was originally there. On the right hand side, we have the uh, surface plot of this temperature profile. We can go back and run the same program with by altering some of the spacings. Let's change the total time to 2000 seconds and number of time steps as 200. And let's change the spatial grids, the, num uh, the total number of spatial grids from 5 to 20 and rerun this program. And let's go back and check our graphical results. So the initial condition is shown on the left hand side, top portion. The endpoints are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius and the interior points are at 0 degrees Celsius. On the left hand side bottom portion, the temperature profile is shown when time equals 2000 seconds. The endpoints are still at 100 degrees Celsius because we are maintaining the temperatures at these endpoints constantly at 100 degrees Celsius and the temperature starts raising in the interior points as shown below. So if on the right hand side we have the uh, surface plot and this is an animation of the temperature variations. The end points are still 100 degrees Celsius and the interior points the temperature starts climbing. And the temperature scale is shown on the right hand side of this particular chart.
so we have we kept the time total time as 2000 seconds so this program is going to run until we hit t equals 2000 seconds here So the lowest temperature is around 83 Celsius, somewhere there, and the highest temperature is 100 degrees C at the end. Now let's go back to our PowerPoint. Let us summarize what we did in this particular video. We presented a 1D transient heat conduction problem. We discretized our domain and solved the problem using finite difference method. In this particular case, the method we chose is the backward time centered space method or the BTCS method. BTCS method is an implicit method and is unconditionally stable. But you still try to maintain the diffusion number D closer or lesser than 0.5 for accuracy considerations and not for stability considerations. We varied the grid spacings and time steps and presented the results graphically using MATLAB. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know. And thanks for watching.